Hello and welcome to the video. This finally is my flight review and full review actually of this ZOHD Altus. Now I've done a couple of videos already, I'll link them down below. First one was unboxing, second one was how I've built it out. However, of those last two videos, there have been quite a few decent questions. First one was, can it run on 6S? I've checked all these with ZOHD directly. They're saying that yes, while the ESCs technically can support 6S, you would have to play around with the props and things, and that if you do it on 6S, you're kind of on your own. Next one was what GoPro units will fit in the nose. Um, all the GoPros, with the exception of the big chunky ones, so things like the GoPro 9, and 3D printable mounts are going to be available, I'm sure, for lots of different options. Uh, going through the build, let me just remind you very quickly, and again, time codes down below if you just want to skip to the flight review. This was built out with a walk snow unit in the nose using a custom 3D printed nose design, linked down below to that as well. We're going to be talking a lot about the nose of this thing in this video. I'll explain why. In the back, I have a Speedy F405 Wing Mini. That is coupled to a Matek GPS and Compass unit here under the GPS hatch. Then I have the Walks and Avatar unit in the nose, as I've said, the Free Sky receiver running S-Bus. And in the nose, I have a massive, big, fat, chunky, 4S2P 7000 milliamp hour lithium ion pack, which is one of the packs that they recommend that you use. Now, I've flown it like this. Now, the overall plane, as I said in the build video, is about 633 grams without the battery in. The battery needed in the nose to get the center of gravity to balance, they're molded on the underside of the wing. This battery weighs 411 grams. You need that kind of weight in the nose, either through an action camera and battery or a battery and just your HD system or whatever. You need a lot of weight here in the nose to get the CG spot on. So that means that overall, this thing is weighing over a kilogram. So it's 1.033 kilograms or 1,033 grams. And that to me feels a bit heavy for an aircraft of this size. Comparing it to things like the Heewing T1 and things like the Atom RC Swordfish, uh, I can get those in flying trim with much smaller batteries, which means that the whole thing is an awful lot lighter. In terms of central gravity, I am flying it exactly where the CG is molded underneath. And I'm also a tweet of a couple of things. The throw of the tail is 10 millimeters, which is the default out of the box uh, for both elevator and rudder. I'll show you, talk about rudder authority in a minute. The ailerons out the box have a really big movement of 20, nearly 20 millimeters. And they're reasonably sized uh, ailerons out towards the end of the wing. That is excessive in my humble opinion. It will support that actually, um, but I reduced mine down to about 14 millimeters of travel. I just reduced the rates to about 80% 80, 80 in iNav, and that's how you're gonna see it fly in a moment. That still gives reasonable row response. It isn't an acrobatic plane. Uh, this is absolutely designed, as you're going to see in a moment, to kind of be a big, heavy, slow, efficient cruiser that can stay in the air for quite a long time. So let's get to the field and talk about how we've done that. So I've set this up pretty normal in that I have a separate power connection for the walk snail unit. So after the GPS is locked, then I can plug the walk snail unit in and it's not going to overheat in the nose. Again, that 3D printable design for the nose is available on Thingiverse. Now, because of the weight, I have increased the thrust on this for the launch. I think it's set to 1900 for auto launch. So not complete 100% throttle, but pretty close. And that's because I'm aware that this thing is pretty chunky at that central gravity weight that I needed for the nose. Over a kilogram just feels a little bit heavy. So let's talk about how we launched it. Now I used auto launch standard settings with that high throttle. And as you can see, it only just made it up into the air. There's very, very still air on this particular day and throwing it into the wind it only just made it. If the grass had been four or five inches longer, it would have been into the grass before it made it into the air. Now trimming it is gonna help that in subsequent flights, but it does mean that you need to give it a really good push and use maximum throttle if you're gonna get that into the air. So let's go through all the stats. 
In terms of its ability to fly slowly, how does it score? Well, that is three stars. It can fly below 20 miles an hour, but in this heavy weight configuration, not a huge amount. I'm starting to get a little bit twitchy around going below about 19, 18 miles an hour at the very least. However, because of its nice size, it does appear very floaty in the video, but I can feel how heavy and ponderous it feels on the controls as I'm flying around. It would be better if this was a little bit lighter. It would allow it to fly well below 20 miles an hour. You can just feel that it wants to do that. So I ideally would have liked an all up weight of around the 800, 850 gram maximum, I think would have given me a far floatier experience. So in terms of high speed, how does it do with that? Well, it scores zero stars because the most I could get out of this on the lithium iron configuration was around 59 miles per hour. But as soon as I opened the throttle, the voltage just fell off a cliff, even with the 4S2P lithium ion pack that I have in here. It dropped down to about 2.7 volts per cell on a reasonably charged pack when I opened the throttle up. Luckily, the LVC or low voltage cutoff in the ESCs doesn't appear to be on, or if it is on, it's set for a very low value, because even at that 2.7 volts per cell, the ESCs were still very, very happy. A LiPo, I'm guessing, would have helped here if you want high speed, but ultimately, I don't think this is going to get much over 70 miles an hour, even with a high performance LiPo in the nose. It's not really designed for that kind of flying. So what about efficiency? Well, it scores very, very well for efficiency. It can poodle around at about 27, 30 miles an hour on relatively low throttle settings, and it's only pulling five and a half, six amps while it's doing that. So as a 7,000 milliamp hour battery, it'll go for 40, 50, maybe even 60 minutes if you are being very careful about your throttle. You don't need a lot of throttle for this to fly around. It's quite happy to poodle, but I would definitely recommend if you're playing with this and you want it for endurance, that you don't want to use a high throttle. Lower throttles are going to let your battery last a little bit longer. Now, in terms of efficiency, they could have also gone for two bladed props that would have increased the efficiency here, but that would have meant that they were much further below the bottom of the body. I'll talk about that in a moment and increased your chance of a prop strike. But that's how things like the Atomasi Swordfish went with a two bladed prop and that actually worked really well. Next one then is noise. This gets a whopping five stars. This is super quiet. You can only just about hear it when it's flying over your head. The rest of the time you wouldn't even know it was in the air. It's a very unobtrusive piece of kit to fly around in your local park or field without alerting everybody that you're in there. Once it is 10, 15 feet away, you're struggling to hear this thing even at higher throttle levels. This speaks to how efficient the motor and prop setup actually is. They've obviously put a lot of time and effort into making sure that it is designed for efficiency, not for speed or low static thrust. In terms of toughness, well, so far nothing's broken. So I'm giving this a four star. And the reason it's lost a star is that the props that are on here, the three bladed props do fall below the bottom of the body. And that means that they could catch something as they're coming in and potentially snag the motor mount or even snap or damage one of the blades on the props. So just be aware of that. So far it hasn't happened here, but I've been flying in fields that have a little bit of grass in there that can soften the landing. Last one is acrobatics. This gets a 1.5 star. It's super stable and really unable to perform the loops and rolls, even if you did have those aileron movements up at that 19, 20 millimeter set. She doesn't like to be thrown about at this heavier weight, at the 1.033 kilograms. She doesn't like to be thrown around. Um, I nearly had a horrific crash going into the ground. This was in manual mode. Lucky I managed to recover it. Uh, it increased my blood pressure and my heart rate a little bit. So I'm very careful with this. I'm not flying this around and trying to fly it like I stole it. Just doesn't like it like that. This absolutely isn't an aerobatic model. Unless you do increase the throws and reduce the all-up weight, it might be an awful lot more forgiving. Room inside, gets a nice four stars. There's loads of room inside for a flight controller and all the other pieces with room to spare for all your cables and piece, bits and bobs. Uh, and of course, that huge battery that you need in the nose with the nose as it is at the moment. And travel breakdown, it gets a good four and a half stars. It breaks down into smaller parts for 
putting away. However, the reason it's lost half a point is that to take the feathers out of the V-tail, well, that means that you have to get a screwdriver. Speaking of the V-tail, elevator authority is loads at 10 millimeter. Rudder authority is average with that 10 millimeter throw, but significantly better than some other V-tails that I've flown recently, like the Atomar Sea Swordfish. It'll give you a little bit of help in your assisted turns, but you're not gonna be able to fly with it and do very quick maneuvers just with the rudder alone. So if they'd have sent this to me before they released it and asked me for their feedback, there would have been two big pieces of feedback. The first would have been, can you make the nose about three inches longer? That would have allowed us to get lighter batteries further forward to offset the weight of the tail to keep the all up weight a little bit easier. And the second bit of advice I would have given them was please, please, please think about how we can have a nose on this that is easier and well designed for things like HD FPV systems or just regular FPV actually. Having a decent place to mount it and lots of airflow would have been great. I think with that nose extension, and I'm sure people are already out there designing these things to 3D print, it would transform this model and make it much more versatile so you wouldn't need all of that weight in the nose. But if you don't mind having to work to hit central gravity with a big honking battery and the lack of mounting options in the nose for all of your FPV stuff, then you know what? This could be quite a nice one for those of you that want to fly. Don't mind that extra weight because it's going to resist the wind quite well and kind of fly for 50, 60 minutes at a time with a whopping great lithium ion. But if you are something that has a bit more versatility for acrobatics and fun flying, then there are probably other twins around that are more versatile for that kind of stuff. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.